Hey, yo, it's me, Brian. <laughs> today, this might be an interesting topic. <laughs> but today, we're going to talk about, you know, saying the truck. You know what I'm saying? When you live out here, every hillbilly that I've come across so far that I know, everybody's got an old 1970-something dinosaur four-wheel drive with a big giant big block motor, you know what I'm saying? A big old gas tank, tires is high, you know what I'm saying? That drives all around all over the place out in the boonies when you need it, you know what I'm saying? The truck, the family truck, you know what I'm saying? Probably was grandpa's truck handed down through the eons, you know what I'm saying? And you end up with it. Well, well, my grandfather, you know, his old truck, he had a 1937 Nash, you know what I'm saying, right? And and he always kept a box in the back of the truck with all the stuff he needed to keep his truck going, right? And saying everybody should do that. I mean, they, they, you can get any kind of a box, any size, any shape, how many doors, everything else, lock all your stuff away, right? And saying you can get them down Walmart, you can get them in Apple, you can get them anywhere. Right, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, sometimes, you know what I'm saying, some things go, you know, to form, and other times things don't really go to form. Especially when you live out here in the, in the boonies when the weather can do anything to you. You know what I'm saying? A quick little rain shower, bang, ruin the whole job, you know what I'm saying? Or, or, you know, four inches of snow build up on top of one of your boxes. You know what I'm saying? Potentially over time, you know what I'm saying, the snow will melt and drain water down into your box. All right, you know what I'm saying? Screw your stuff up, you know, you know a little bit anyway. Right, because this is the box that you need to be carrying on your truck just in case your truck breaks down because you also got a box of tools with it. Right? All right, well, here, let me show you what I'm talking about. Now, sometimes, for reasons unexplained in the human mind, you know saying, sometimes you take stuff out of the back of your truck that you shouldn't, you know saying, and you set it down because you need the whole space in your truck. Right? This is logical. This is everything that people do all the time. Uh, but sometimes, you know what I'm saying, over, you know, over a short period of time, right, while it's sitting there, you know what I'm saying, you know, a couple of days, maybe a week or 10 days before you get a chance to put it back on the truck, right, you know <laughs> right, this is what I'm talking about, right, you know what I'm saying, it's the last, you know, couple of weeks or so, it's been a little stormy here and a lot of snow and a lot of rain, right, and this box has been sitting right here with the chill box, you know what I'm saying, right, and it's just, in, you know, you see what I'm talking about. But the problem here is, is that not really all of the stuff, because everything's in a sealed, as you can see, sealed container, and it's, the tools are mostly hammers anyway, hammers and pry bars, except for that big crescent wrench, a couple of blasts of some, you know, navel jelly, get the rust out of it, it works fine. The funnels are good, the toolbox is good. Uh, I just need to figure out what to do with this wire. Who's stuff it down on the ground, Brian? Sure, look. You see what's floating around on top of it? <laughs> you might just dump it out on the ground. But I'm not going to. And here, I'll give you another reason why. There's another one sitting right there. You know what I'm saying? And, and that one is, is probably got mostly oil in it. That one is potentially really hazardous. You know what I'm saying? So with that one and this one, I'm going to dispose of this stuff. You know what I'm saying? In a relatively safe place, considering where we're at. You know what I'm saying? In a safe way. Right? You know what I'm saying? Now, I, I know a lot of you guys are going to say, This is petty, Brian. Just dump the shit on the ground. No, this is not petty. And I'm not going to be hypocritical either and tell you, about, tell you not to do something when I'm about to do it myself. No, that's not about this. This is about safety. This is about doing it, the, you know, at least trying to figure out a better way to do it, you know what I'm saying, where it really doesn't contaminate a whole lot. And yes, grant, you know what I'm saying, with all the contamination and the radioactivity and the poison and the plant bills and, and everything else that's buried in the ground. You know what I'm saying? This, this is an insignificant little teeny tiny amount. You know what I'm saying? And 90% and of it is water. It's going to filter back down into the water table anyway, and it's going to be okay, right? The bad stuff, the rust, and, and the little bit of overspill of the chemicals, the oils and stuff, that's going to settle down into the dirt, and it's only going to be right there, probably about six or eight inches down in that circle, right? You know what I'm saying? And, and it's, it's over time, it's just going to melt away, just like everything else, right? You know what I'm saying? But... but but mind you, you know what I'm saying? Yes, I understand the difference. I understand the significance of what I'm about to do. I've done it before. I'll, show you, I'll, I'll leave a link for another video that I made concerning something like this very thing and what I said then. Okay, I don't know about the audio because the wind is swirling around. 
He finds you a nice little insignificant place in the corner of your yard somewhere. You know, like out behind the camp trailers or something. All right, you dig your little hole. So I got to do. Come on, you guys know what I'm doing. All right, but how many of them are really going to do this when you get, if the opportunity arises, right, or the situation requires it? All right. We were lucky. There really wasn't a whole lot of bad stuff. It's just mostly water. All right. We're just going to let it flow right into this little depression. Because this is not bad. <laughs> the ground sucks, you know, the water up really fast here. All right. But think about it. You understand? Know, you know, that that's why most of this video was shot at ground level. Right. Because, you know, I'm concerned with the ground, with our environment. Yeah, sure, I'm poisoning it right now. You see, but I need to because this is dangerous. It's laying around in the yard. The kids, the dogs, you know what I'm saying? The wild little creatures, you know what I'm saying? They get, right? I mean, that's that's how plague starts. I mean, we're, we're in that moment in history where plagues and viruses and all the other stuff, you know what I'm saying, is running rampant, right? You know what I'm saying? And besides, standing water anywhere breeds mosquitoes. And, and, and that feeds right into what I'm saying. Mosquitoes now, they carry all kinds of stuff with Nile disease, some kind of weird virus that I can't even say, right? And other stuff, you know what I'm saying? So you want to think about it. Be reasonable in what it is that you're doing. Huh? This is me, Brian. Yeah, we're going to bury it as soon as it drains down a little bit more. Huh? Please like and subscribe and share this video. Huh? If you think other people need to, you know, start thinking a little better. Thank you.